We begin with the order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Have mercy on us, O God. We confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbor. We have built walls instead of tables. We have turned away the stranger. We have sought glory for ourselves and have treasured that which does not satisfy. Help us to love as you love, to welcome those you send, and to treasure mercy and justice. Turn us from our ways to your ways, and free us to th serve those in need. Amen. God, who makes all things new, forgives your sin for Jesus' sake. Lift up your heads and your hearts. Yours is the kingdom of God. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort. 
comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you anointed your beloved Son to be priest and sovereign forever. Grant that all the people of the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united by the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you on the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king, for this I was born. And for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I wonder if anyone plays checkers anymore. At least with a real checkerboard and with real checkers. Not virtually or online or on any type of screen but with a person sitting across the table from them. I remember playing that game when I was a kid. I haven't played it for years. And I'm guessing that many of you probably have learned the simple game of checkers at some time in your life growing up. Do you remember what happens if you get your checker the whole way across the board to the bottom back line of the game board of your opponent? You say two words king me. And that means that another checker is placed on top of the one checker, kind of like a double-decker cookie, if you will. And with that power, you can now jump backwards and forwards, and you have more power. As that famous line goes from the Mel Brooks movie, The History of the World, it's good to be king. Being a king has its privileges for sure. Well, every year we conclude our church liturgical cycle with Christ the King Sunday. 
And every year, most pastors will utter something to the effect that Christ is indeed our king. Jesus' kingship is unlike the kingdoms of this world. That Jesus' kingship, the kingdom of heaven, turns the ways of the world on its head. And of course, this is all true once again. Even during a pandemic, when we come to Christ the King Sunday, we are reminded of the debate, the dialogue, the confrontation that occurs between the earthly ruler of Pilate and the Messiah King of Jesus, who during his final days and hours is put before this representative of the Roman Empire, this procurator Pontius Pilate, who has the power to determine Jesus's earthly fate. As Christians, on this side of the empty tomb, we certainly understand, believe, and proclaim that Christ is indeed our King, who conquers even death. We believe that there's nothing in this life that has the final word over God, that nothing in this world, no matter how absurd, pathetic, stupid, ridiculous, evil, horrific, malicious, or selfish as it can sometimes be, None of these things have final power or final say, even over our lives, even when we die. And that is a major trump card to hold in our pockets, but even more so in our heart, mind, and soul. The challenge, of course, is while we recognize and proclaim that and be comforted in the final acts of God that promises us a feast of victory for all who have gone before us in the faith, for all our loved ones, and for even for us right now, and for all who come after us, this is not the end of this proclamation. As Christian believers, we not only believe in the kingdom come, but we believe in acting as if that kingdom is here now already. Jesus himself proclaimed that the kingdom of God had come near, that the kingdom of heaven was at hand with his presence in the world. Even in the Lord's Prayer, we pray, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, meaning right now, this day, not just something that will occur down the road or when the world ends or after we die. Therefore, as Christians, we begin to live in this tension, which the season of Advent, which starts next Sunday, is all about. It is a world very much still caught up with kingships and monarchies and lords of power by human means. While the kingdom of God, the reign of God, is being ushered in through the event of Jesus, but has not yet come to full culmination with Christ's return and with God making God's final act for humanity, which for us means death is completely defeated for the world. It presenting us a new life uh, beyond the scope of our imagination forever, that promise comes. So in the meantime, we are certainly not called to sit around and say, well, there will come a day. Instead, we are to act into that kingdom now, which means that we have to do and deal with aspects of power in the meantime. Because the reality is, when there's a king around, there is power announced, recognized, insinuated, and often even exercised. Often to make sure chaos comes into order, even if that order is not necessarily a positive influence and outcome for the living of these days for all people. I mean, it's hard to escape the notion of power, even in the different ways we use that word king. He's king of the mountain, the kingpin, King Kong, Burger King. And then there's that famous old cereal that I actually ate a ton of when I was a kid, King Vitamin. Remember that commercial? King Vitamin, have breakfast with the king. Wow, the vitamins and nutrition that just oozed out of those clumps of sugar one ate surely made one feel like a king or maybe honestly gave us a rush in our brain of such a sugar high that made us feel like the world was kneeling before us. 
I don't know. The reality is this whole thing of power is very much like possessing the ring as in the Lord of the Rings trilogy. When we get a ring of power these days, things are altered in our day-to-day living. In other words, power changes people. It changes our outlook. It changes our priority. Power can be used and abused and misused in so many ways. And anytime we need an example of that, we can simply look at the world around us every day. So how as Christians do we wield power? How as Christians do we live with this notion of power? It is often opposite to how the world most often seeks to exercise it. As a Christian, it takes a certain power to turn the other cheek. As a Christian, it takes a certain power to love our enemies. As a Christian, I think one can make the case that it takes even more power not to strike back, not to seek revenge, and not just scorch the earth, especially if we have been unjustly wronged. However, we also know the ways of this world. Sometimes bad people get elected. Sometimes bad people get power. Atrocities in our human condition occur again and again because people have put their needs, their wants, their desires, and their thirst for power ahead of another person's well-being. The Pope has power. The President of the United States has power. Our leaders in government and security folks have power. It is meant and designed to be a gift and a privilege to exercise it. The difference in the power to do good and the power to do wrong sometimes becomes a very thin line. And sometimes even the person with good intention gets swallowed up by it all. Sometimes in our mortality, in our human condition, the line becomes so blurred that it is difficult to see what power should be exercised and to what extent so that the best outcome may be attained. Attained. This is where, as Christians, we seek to turn to the Scripture and focus on the life of Jesus and His words and actions in the world around Him. So again, where do you wield power in your life? What and how do you see faith impacting that power? Whether it be as a parent, a grandparent, a boss, a leader, an elected official, a supervisor, a teacher, or any place where your influence impacts another person's livelihood and their very well-being, even down to the ability for them to have food, water, shelter, and health. What we do in positions of power matters. Christ the King Sunday is not just a time to recognize that indeed Jesus is our King, Well, this is certainly what we proclaim. But it is also a reminder to see how we live each day with the gospel, saturating our outlook, our thinking, and our behaviors, which includes our decisions and acts of power from our leaders and even from ourselves and our own little world. How is your power promoting and enhancing and embracing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayers of intercession. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. God, you sent your son Jesus to testify to the truth. We pray for preachers, missionaries, and teachers who carry your forgiveness and love to the world. Fill their words and actions with compassion and kindness so that your truth will shine. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your son Jesus to liberate all of creation. We pray for all living things longing for the freedom to flourish, from ancient trees and wild grasses to endangered animals and rare insects. Give human beings compassion and hearts to care for them. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your son Jesus to lead us into the ways of peace. Direct the members of international alliances in choosing a nonviolent path toward the future. Give them the humility and wisdom to make just decisions to benefit all. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your son Jesus to make us into your own people, set free to serve you. We pray for the people who serve the well-being of others, especially ministries in our community. Renew them in their work. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your son Jesus to rule in all times and places. We pray for the friends of our congregation who are unable to join our worship in person and for all who are sick and suffering. Join their prayers with ours and unite them with us in the body of Christ. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you sent your son Jesus to be our beginning and our ending. We give thanks for those whose lives have been given us a glimpse of Jesus' reign and justice. Empower us to join their witness. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our hope and strength, we entrust to you all from whom we pray. Remain with us always, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may God, the beginning and the end, who has written your name in the book of life, bless you, and keep you in grace and peace from this time forth forevermore. Amen. Led by the saints before us, let us go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.